this this might be spoilers, but this battle entirely pointless. I should have water resolved it. Now I thought, well, maybe maybe I can make them believe, right? Maybe I can do enough damage to them that it'll make you know dealing with this army won't be able to push forward. We could, but no. Ultimately, no. I managed to reduce this entire attacking force down to a, to a quarter of what it was, and it's completely meaningless because they replenish in two turns. So this battle, it's you know nice, nice to watch, but completely fucking useless. Also, they haven't fixed the the battle desync, the wall, the wall sieged um, battle desyncs. I don't know what it is. The replays, for some reason, in wall sieges, just fuck up. I don't know why. I suspect it might be related to the changes they did to sieges. That's my guess, but that's purely me just like stab in the dark. Anyway, so they're attacking from three different directions, which always is fun. That means you have to split your army in three different parts. And of course, I barely have enough forces to deal with the army as it is, let alone defend three sections of the wall. So realistically, what I probably should have done is just pull back to the center here and defend this. That probably would have been the better option. Um, but I did try and sort of defend the walls, to be honest wasn't really worth it. The main issue here for me is going to be the multiple enemy characters because I don't really have an answer for them. They are very tough for low-level infantry to kill and just, just dealing with the characters themselves is bad enough but then the rest of the units on top of them just makes that basically impossible. So what I'm saying here is I should have hit the auto resolve button and uh, not felt guilty about it. I thought well maybe maybe I can you know give them a bloody nose but it just it's meaningless when you know two turns later they're back up to full strength with absolutely no losses and not having to recruit anything you just kind of think <laughs> which is why i do I, I do get some comments it's like oh you should have fought that siege it would have been you would have done some damage to them and this is this is the reason why not it's just pointless it doesn't doesn't make any difference you can sometimes do damage to them but i think i'm pretty good at judging when i can compared to when i can't and um yeah, I misjudged this. Anywho, so we are defending the wall over here with armoured Cossars. Continuing to hold the line against the Clan Rat Spears. Clan Rats and Skaven Slaves. As they come up to the top of the wall, we club them to death. Or, you know, shoot them. Either way, doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not fussed. You want to pop a cap in their ass? Be my guest. Execution style. Fantastic. Anyway, so we're holding that. That's been pretty good. Uh, we have our general chasing down the enemy chieftain. The enemy chieftain is less good. So we should be able to win that fairly handily. And we do have the bonus versus infantry. It's only 15, but it does give us a little, little benefit when taking on uh, heroes on foot. So there is that. And um, we seem to be... I mean, they're fairly, fairly even. I do have a slight slight advantage but then he's got more armor so you know he's actually got armor piercing do i have armor piercing i have 140 what's he got he's got 296 oh, shit. much better i would i'm so you know nah, there we go he's actually kind of winning that it's fine we will win it eventually it's not too bad we're moving units back over to try and uh, help with the defense we've pulled our Kossar's back to the sort of central location because they're all going to have to come up here if they want to fight us, but they are sending those assassins in, and again, I don't really have an answer for those assassins. They will just be able to embed themselves in the, in my one of my units and just carve away, and there's very little I can do about it. We seem to be winning this. This seems fine, um, and we actually managed to take out the Chieftain as well, so, you know, that's a bit of a win. Uh, but these units are busy, and to get them back over here in time to actually do anything to actually get involved in the battle will take time. And unfortunately, I do not have that time. I have a unit of Clan Rat Spears charging up, trying to take that central objective. And I'm like, nope. I'm going to fill you full of arrows. Of course, we only have so many arrows, and they've got like, a lot of Clan Rats. Uh, looking at numbers, we can see that they've, uh, they've lost about a quarter of their army so far. I'm not going to say that defenders don't do well, it's just ultimately, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how much damage they do if the enemy army will just replenish in two turns. I mean, they almost managed to replenish in one, so... Uh, replenishment is both... 
probably one of the worst things and one of the best things Total War introduced. It's worse because it makes individual battles significantly less meaningful. But it's also reduced a lot of the micromanagement. I'm wondering if they slowed replenishment down considerably. So that your armies do replenish, but... You know, you can't replenish half a unit in a turn. You know, maybe maybe the unit replenishes by like, say, 5%, maybe 10% at max. And at least that point, if you, you know, if, you, if your unit is almost dead, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a long time to get it back into, into actual use, rather than, oh, your unit's now healed in one turn. <laughs> Because, <laughs> you know, back in, like, the medieval days, you didn't, not like, you know, back in the medieval days, back in the Total War medieval days, you didn't replenish. There was no replenishment. Replenishment came in in, I want to say, Fall of the Samurai? I think that was the first game with replenishment. Unless it was in Shogun 2. But it wasn't in Medieval 2, was it? You had to, if you wanted to replenish your unit, you had to take it to a city where you could recruit a unit like that and then retrain them. And it would they would keep some of their experience, but they would otherwise be completely healed. But in between battles, they just didn't replenish. If you lost someone, they were gone. You could merge units together. But that did mean that each battle was, was quite meaningful. You know, even if you won a battle, but took a lot of casualties doing it, that might mean that army was going to have to pull back because they wouldn't replenish along the way. You, you're going to have to make, potentially pull back to a city. So that kind of made each battle more meaningful and kind of turn it into less of a of a wave assault, which is what total what modern total war feels like. It's kind of like they just keep throwing armies at you until. I mean, that's the difficulty, isn't it? Just the, the sheer number of enemy armies. That's really the difficulty. Individually, they're not actually particularly any good, but you know, wave upon wave of them, enough people declaring war on you, that's where the difficulty lies, trying to kill all of them at the same time. Winning a battle is not the difficult thing, it's winning the war. We're desperately trying to hold on to the central objective here, we managed to just grab it, oh, it's, it's coming back, it's coming back, but then they're pouring more and more units into it, and uh, we are eventually going to lose it, mostly because Throt is there, along with a bunch of other characters, and so they have them higher weights than our infantry, and the tower will finally go down. We do have another tower over here, it's kind of pounding the enemy, doing a little bit of damage, and we can see that numbers-wise, we've managed to reduce the enemy to about half their number, again, completely fucking meaningless. So far, so good. I mean, you know, within reason. We're going to finally lose that supply location. They're trying to push up to grab the key building, but we're going to chase them with some armoured Kossars. Our units are starting to waver, and we've done... Well, we've gotten down to about 7... 7... 6... 6... 1... 7... 7... 50. It's not bad. And we're also chasing down the warp fire throws over here. Just, they're just running away. I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to grab that objective, and I'm just... Oh God, I hope, I hope no one was living in that house. Me. Yikes. Taking out those warp fire throws, at least doing some damage to them anyway. Which, of course, will be replaced. And uh, even though... There we go. Six. Six hundred. I say, I think we get, we get down to about five hundred. Five hundred enemies, which means... Yes, we're going to start with two thousand. It's quite a, quite a reduction in their numbers. Still, we are going to lose Prague, which means I'm going to have to come and retake it. And then find an army to staff in it. Still, it's, it's fine. We can, we can retake Prague. It's not the first time Prague's been burned to the ground anyway. Oh, 
well, gave it a shot. But with that many characters in the army, it was always going to be basically impossible. Oh, fuck, where did you even come from? How can you even afford that as well? You've only got one fucking settlement left, technically. Then where? I mean, maybe you got Zoyshnek as well. Maybe you got even more over here. How many do you have? Uh, three. Right. So you were supporting that on, on fuck all, were you? All right. Well, I'm going to go and retake it, basically. See, it was almost pointless fighting that battle. Like I should have just auto resolved it. In fact, I'm half tempted to just go back and auto resolve it. But then I've already fought it. But then oh, I don't know. If, because I'm fairly sure. You do have the 2% additional replenishment, but that looks like a lot more than the replenishment they should have. I guess you've got the assassins, which increase it as well. Yeah, I should have probably just um, or resolved that to save time. I mean, I can retake it. That's not the problem, but they've obviously reduced it down to level 1, which means I need to rebuild it again. And uh... Well... Me and the sisterhood's dead. Where are you going? Oh, don't just run around, Throt. Alright, I'll be take Prague. You're going to go run around and start taking stuff, aren't you? Oh. Mostly being annoying rather than actually effective. Which is what I really hate. Okay, we need more guys. I need only the best. Ye well, of ice. Uh, at least Kizla will be fine, but Zavrasta, hmm, probably not. Still, I think that might be his only. Oh, he's probably got these actually. I need an army to stay here to defend it. But you can't stick around here. You've got to go and hunt them down. Mixed with the danger that they'll probably get an ambush off and jump all of. I mean, fortunately, they've made mostly got trash. Kislev is fine, ish, probably. It's got an elemental bear. It's fine. Oh, we've got another guy. Okay, well, in that case, whoever's going to give us the most money can go in there. Because you've got a gold mine, which suggests you're probably making a fair chunk of change. All right, we've got restock. Tal's judgment. Missile strength, servant to the Tsar. More diplomatic relations with Kislev. That seems almost completely fucking useless. Uh, you get Urson's raw experience gain for when fighting against chaos, or alternatively, regeneration for Hagwitch heroes and Vanguard deployments. Um, right. Well, I mean, I guess regeneration might be useful for them if they have something like Forbidden Rod. Uh, this is probably the most useful. This one feels almost complete. Well, I guess the spell resistance might be useful, but a symbol of my power. But I'm not. I'm not super, super invested. Okay, uh, I guess we'll go with money because that's the best one. Do we have anything which will? Are you in our territory? You are in our territory. Is it Tor? No. Is it this one? Bitterness of winter. Gives leadership, speed, and vigor. Now, if we use this one, no food meat there, please. No, you're not in our territory. You're in your own territory, which is why you're replenishing. Your fuck. All right, well, you're taking damage. Although, admittedly, the amount of attrition taking you from 140s game and saves down to 129 is that useful? No, not really. Yay! We're dominating! Look at that. So, diplomatic relation, control, leadership, and speed. Defender of Kislev. 
Alright, seeing as we're fairly safe of the Oblast. in this general region, he says. Only the bravest are required. Hoping. Uh, we're gonna go with... Let's get a couple of you guys, something like that. Uh, what's our garrison like? Completely fucked. However, your army is very shit. So let us... Meander out this way. We're going... Strongholder. Hmm, maybe. Student of Miska. Okay, none of those are great, so we'll get you. Hop in there. Recruit that guy. Yeah, and then we'll recruit a couple of them. And... Hopefully, if you decide to attack, you'll realise that even with the fucked garrison, you've got no chance in hell! I'm assuming he must have that one then. That must be his little... Problem is that's like a within range. Ah, oh, you bastard. You fucking bastard. I was hoping to like hit them, hit them hard and wipe them out before they could do anything, but <sighs> now they're all over the fucking place and I have to try and contain them. And that's really annoying. Oh, because that got sacked. Bugger. I lead, you follow. Defy chaos. I do it for Jesus. Um, okay. If we move in this direction, we weren't spotted, which is good. And you are putting together a little army to try and defend that. You can grab some winged lancers. You... If you want to escape, I mean, you have two options. You could take Zavrasta, in which case we've got two armies currently converging on your position. Alternatively, you could try and run back home, in which case I'm hoping Katarin would be able to catch you. We don't have any little groms. Campaign line of sight is not super useful. Glacial Prism would be useful if we had more thingy-majigs, but we don't. What's this? Dwarven Anvils. More armor for Kislev Malaria units isn't the worst thing. Breach Loaders is actually pretty good. For hollowed wood buildings. Okay. I'm in, camp I'm in campaign movement range. For all the motherland. You can't go wrong with campaign movement range, can you? Right, we'll get more gold, because you know me, I love my gold. We'll keep building up Prague. Hello, what do you want? A non-aggression pact. Seeing as you want to pay me, sure. Also, things have gone tits up for you as again, haven't they, Costaltin? I've noticed. You were, you were pushing back. That was great. Where the fuck have you gone? Where, oh, you went to retake it. Okay. That's not the worst thing. We may come here. You just wait there. Never yield. I am worried about Prague. <laughs> Champion of Kislev. The issue is, they've got a very high chart. The AI always, always seems to manage to ambush, which means it makes me very nervous. And you melee siege, and then we can relieve it with Darius. Uh, fuck it. Fuck it. That's a Pyrrhic victory. How... Okay, how the fuck do they have a full garrison? It's such bullshit. <laughs> such fucking bullshit. 
Ugh, full fucking garrison, obviously, of course. Okay. Hello, Throt. Finally caught up with you. Time to put you back in the ground where you fucking belong. I mean, you actually technically like being in the ground, so I'm gonna put you out of the grounds. Mountain. Top of the mountain. Fuck you. Anyway, so we've got a nice little defensive position here between some rocks. Relying on the things in the wood who are currently hiding in the trees. It's a namesake. And the wing lancers to defend my flanks. You're going to defend my flanks. So well on you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Good boys. Okay, we're going to slow down the enemy army. Here comes uh, Throt. Throt's actually very, very fucking tanky, isn't he? He's going to charge into our boys here. And they do have another bonus 15 versus large. I mean, they don't have any melee attack anymore, but still. That chieftain just rampages through... Oof. Rampages through my infantry line. Meanwhile, the cavalry moving in on the left flank. Smashing into that unit of Skaven slaves, sending them flying and then moving out of combat. We're trying to take out the warp fire throws because they are a threat, and our missile units are doing just that. That chieftain's managed to smash right into my missile line, which is a big problem for us. Throt is taking some damage. Thanks to Forkax Man. Good job. The shittest of Kislev superheroes. Things in the wood, I've just kind of left them to their own devices. They seem to be doing fine. Not too worried about that. We've got our Varjar. Varjar leading the Kislevite warriors, trying to heal them up, keep them alive, vaguely. The Chieftain has taken a bunch of shots from the Streltsy, straight in the face. I think I'll send him packing. With any luck, anyway. And then the Wing Lancers doing more charges there, smashing into the Skaven Slays, sending them flying. These guys, I mean, they do have bonus first large. They do actually, oh, these are Skaven Spits. They do actually have charge reflection. I hadn't realised that. Going to pull the Wing Lancers out. They've taken 91 kills, not doing too badly there. And the Skaven army is uh, mostly destroyed. You can see dropping spells on their heads. Throt still going strong, but losing health. Pulling away from those clan rats and then charging back in. Lovely charge. Some of them all flying there and then charging into the survivors of the last two units. The Winged Lancers once again held that flank impressively well. Throt is running for his existence. Uh, he does have a speed of 95. He is quite, quite nippy. But he gets a nice, nasty ice shard at the bottom. Nice shard suppository. And off his army goes. Of course, it doesn't matter if they're running away, because it's a settlement battle, and they're all dead. Okay, well, that's you beaten up. But my greater concern is, is Prague. They didn't have a chance to ambush me. I would just sit you, I'd march you outside. But the likelihood is I march you outside, immediately, immediately ambushes him. These guys don't get a look in to help. What's the garrison like? Okay, the garrison is looking better. I'm not going to spend any money there just in case I do lose it again. I could you for additional growth. That might be potentially a good idea. You know what I want? I want the, the Golden Warrior. So, what do I need for that? I need... Uh, fuck, which building was it? The Royal Thingamajig. That one. It's kind of surplus to requirements, but... Let's do something like that. I could get more furs. Does increase income from farms, which we don't have many of. I don't really need the supporters. I... I do want the garrison, though, just to be on the safe side. Ooh, arcane conduit. Yes, please. Double arcane conduits. 
Triple arcane co Oh no. Uh, okay, you can, I guess, have an icon of strength for all the good it's going to do you. It's something. Defender of Kislev. You can recruit some more of them. And who's done a thing? You've done a thing. What do you want to be? Master builder or drill master? Master builder. Because we very rarely bother recruiting units. Because ideally, you never lose them. Okay, so Vrasta is fine. I should have built defences. Oh, fuck. At least on the plus side, we've got the army there. On the downside, they've got Gorich and also artillery. And the artillery is not... Not necessarily the end of the world. Uh, Gorich, though, is going to be a fucking nightmare to take down. Don't really know what to do about that. Um, okay, well, I mean, we've got to try and save Prague. The second defence of Prague. Will this one go better? Well, we can, but hope. First things first, we need to take out the warp fire throwers. So, could be concentrating fire on the warp fire throwers. Ideally, we have a bunch of armoured cossars holding the line here on this flank. On the other side, at least they're only attacking in two directions, which makes my life easier. We've sent the Kosovite dervishes out into the trees to go and hide, as soon as they can find somewhere to hide. And uh, their objective is to try and knock out the plague claw catapults. Meanwhile, we've pulled our forces back to the centre here because that just seemed like a better idea, to be honest. It's just uh, defending the walls just seems vaguely silly. We'll sort of defend these, trying to keep them, you know, a little bit busy. Take out those warp fire throwers before they do too much damage. There we go. And then guarding the breaches in these walls with the... No, the, were these the... I mean... Did they do an agent action or something? Not sure. Doesn't matter. Anyway. Skaven slaves pour through the breach there, straight into the waiting guns of the Kosovite. Armoured Kosovites. Armoured Kosovites. There we go. Got there in the end. So far, so good. They do have a, a Plague Priest who's currently going to make his way through. He's going to try and grab, grab objectives. We need to fill him full of lead. They're trying to take down. I mean, it means they're, not, they're mostly just wasting their ammunition there, but that's fine if that's what they want to do. They're sort of waiting for a breach before they get decide to get inside. Gorich is also attacking this gate over here. I do remember. I can't remember what it, it was. I think it was like a presentation on how the Total War AI deals with sieges, and it kind of like creates groups of units and then tries to make a breach in the wall, and then uses that. So I'm assuming that this is one group here. They're trying to make a breach through Catapult. And then you've got Gorich and these warp fire throws. They're trying to make a breach by attacking the gatehouse. Now, which is fine. Except you could do both. I mean, you could you could attack this gate as well. You could send units over the top. There's, there's a number of options they have here. Particularly because no one's actually defending the wall. Now, if I was defending the wall, maybe they'd change what they were doing. Um... But to be honest, that didn't seem like a good idea. So I'm just going to let them take the gates because I don't really care. Meanwhile, we're just trying to deal with that Plague Priest who is going to grab this objective. I'm not super worried about that since I don't actually have any defences here and I'm more interested in killing him with our ranged attacks. Meanwhile, we've got some Storm Vermin trying to smash their way through the gate and Clan Rats and more storm vermin up on the wall over there. So we're going to bring the armoured cossars, having just annihilated those warp fire throwers, or at least mostly annihilated them. We're then going to wait for them to come through before we decide to just, just hold them off, to be honest. Should be fine. Now, the fact that Gorich is actually inside the city first kind of makes my life a little bit easier because he is going to attack by himself. If he attacked in concert with the rest of his army, that could be problematic by himself makes, you know, makes things a little bit easier for me.
Hmm, interesting. I don't remember that Mort Fire Thrower surviving that. Could be wrong. Doesn't matter. Anyway, we're going to take out that Plague Priest by holding this objective. As soon as we take this objective, I think he then decides to come back to grab it again. Yeah, he's just turned around and decided to come back. Very weird. So Gorich is charging by himself. He is going straight for our front line, which is fine. It means that we can just, like, lay into him. So we, we can just shoot him. We're going to shoot him. Just shoot him full of, full of everything. Mm, I think these guys ran away. I don't think they sat there. I don't think I would have ignored them. I could be wrong. But I could be wrong. Okay, Gorich is surrounded. He's taking missile fire from every side. He's taking tower blasts directly to the face. He was going to be a, a big problem for me. So actually solving that this early is oh, really liberating. Really liberate. If, if he'd waited for the rest of his army, I would have had problems. But, uh, nope. Okay, that Plague Priest is getting wrecked. Those warp fire throws are just launching fire into my back. Again, I'm... Also, I don't think these guys... Went, I think they attacked these guys. I think this is decent. Fuck! Here comes the enemy general. He's charging in as well. Gorich is dead. Going to uh, deal with the enemy general. Again, they're just attacking by themselves. Very That's very Rome 2, isn't it? So we're, we're fighting these guys, which is fine. But again, I oh, no, this is desynced. This is definitely desynced. It's not horrendous, but it definitely has. I wonder if it's like a leadership thing. Because they definitely... I think they shattered. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Interesting. Hmm, we shall see. More fire throwers coming around the flank again. Uh, not, I think they came around this way instead. This is very odd. Yeah, these more fire throwers definitely run away. The the three units of Skaven here just attacked these guys and we held for the entire battle. What fire throwers are now in combat with them, I guess. Yeah, you can see they were actually going for these guys over here, which is wrong. Oh, God, I better just submit a fuck. I thought they'd fixed it. They haven't. They have not fixed that. God damn it. Never mind. Uh, right, what's going on over here? Right, the Kosovite dervishes have indeed managed to take out the warp fire... The, not the warp fire thrower, the thingy-majig, the plague claw catapult. There we go. The plague claw catapult is out of commission, which is exactly what we needed. They didn't actually manage to kill all of them. Uh, they left 22 alive. Are there 22 alive now? Nope, there's only 16. 13. Yep. Good. Okay. Okie dokie. So, the, the Watchmen of the Knights cutting their way through the clan rats, trying to kill off the only general. Gotta be honest, I think my general took more damage from Gorich as well. So, um, yes. Yes. You guys. Ye yes. Ye yes. Yes. And you're just taking more fire thrower fire. I mean, it's, yeah, this has gone all kinds of fucked up. Oh, God damn it. All right. Well, I guess, guess I'm going on the Discord and complaining then. Right. Well, the first... The first defense of Prague didn't go so well, but the second one, definitely, definitely a lot better. So that's good.
I will uh, pray to the skies. Sure. We've got a Dawnstone, Darius the Constructor. We've got a plague in Kislev, but it's just. Oh, it's Escape from Plague. Fuck! Where did that come from? Oh, Escape from Plague is the worst! Every time it refreshes, it hits five turns. Oh, no. Tits. Where did that come from? No, seriously, where did it come from? Where did it originate? Well, it's obviously been spreading for a while. Fuck. Oh, that could really Land for the taking. Okay, can you just stay there? Follow your queen. We need to defend Prague. That's the army that retreated. We know they've got another one over there somewhere. We just need to take... Huh. <laughs> it's got a, like a little chair on its back. <laughs> That's adorable. Fuck me, I hope it's got fucking seatbelts. Oof. Oh, it's going to really dick me over, that Skaven Plague. Five turns of minus... I mean, I'm hemorrhaging money as it is. I can't build anything, can I? I'll cancel that. I'll keep the defences because I think I'm going to need them. Uh, you can have heroic resilience. Sure. And inspiring With presence. This, my rule is absolute. Okay, and we need to really lay in. House is the side of truth. Need to really lay in uh, to throt. So I was hoping to do a decapitating strike, but that did not fucking decapitate him, did it? Okay, I can't build any more buildings, but luckily we're going to get a gold mine as long as that scaven plate doesn't spread more. Oh, it's just the worst. Scape and Plague. Every time it spreads, it, it, re it goes back to five turns. It's really nasty. Attrition. No replenishment. Cost reduction. It's basically everything Nurgle Plague should be. Scape and Plague is so much worse than Nurgle Plague. Nurgle Plague does fuck all. Scape and Plague is absolutely fucking devastating. Oh, goods. But they're rendezvous points. Okay, we get the Wrath of Kislev. We can't recruit those. We get immune to psychology, right? Or an icon, diplomations with Kislev, right? And global recruitment capacity. Both of those are fucking useless. Uh, I don't know, icon, I guess. Hello. You look a bit fancy, don't you? What have you got? You've got Urson's Claw. Okay, not bad. You look very, very chonky. Golden Wafers. That's Corruption, Spell Resistance, and a little bit of ward save there, and Vig Loss Reduction, Attrition Suffered from All... Okay, that's right, and then the Totem of Ursus, which is... Oh, negates all magical weapon. Okay, wait, is that everyone's? Everyone's magical weapon. All enemies... Oh, all enemies in range. Okay, well, that's, that's not bad. Would you like... Oh, you've already got a sword. Um, I don't have any armour, so I'm afraid you're just going to have to... just going to have to make do. Never mind. Um, what ability... Right, what trait do you have? So, the Tsarina's Guardian. So you've got diplomatic relations with Kislev. Sure. Uh, they really, they really want to give you diplomatic relation with Kislev, don't you? The fact that there's... Okay, admittedly, Boris, right... The, I mean, Boris and Ostankia do exist. Ostankia's over the other side of the world, so it doesn't really matter. And Boris usually dies very early on. The rest of the Kislev factions tend to get their ass handed to them very rapidly. The only other one is Kostaltin, who, if you're playing as Katrin, then you're going to be able to confederate with them anyway. So I don't, they really want to give you more diplomatic relations with Kislev, although it's completely useless. Still. Golden Aegis is going to give us physical resistance and melee defense. The Chosen Successor. It's bonus first infantry and someone's uh, more hit points and armor. We've got aura size and cooldown reduction on Urson's core. We've got allegiance gained with Kilivslev and diplomatic relations with... K okay. Yep. Nope. Fine. And Kislev unites. 
which is leadership and melee attack uh, increases as the unit takes damage. Okay, and we get some some other ooh, shield of the motherland, which is armor for the hero army. That's quite useful. Enchanted armor, ward save the accompanying hero. That's quite useful. Call down to all spells. That's quite useful. Personal bodyguard, melee defense, the accompanying lord. That's fine. And vigor loss reduction for the lord as well. And there's Arena's Guardian, which is going to give immune to flanking and physical resistance addition. Oh, okay. So basically, big old, big old bodyguard skills there. Uh, otherwise, that's you know generally fine. Let's march to the Zarina. More speed for for the for Zargard and Ice Guard. That's quite nice. Uh, you got more melee attack for Ice Guard for units above seven and above, and weapon strength for the same. Up to plus 5 and 15. Pretty good. Learn from the best unit experience gain for those. Okay, that's fine. Ceremonial Dormants is more armor and melee defense for Zargard. And finally, Unyielding Kinmanship is missile resistance and spell resistance for the entire army and also standard ground. You know what? Actually, I, I Right, apart from the fact that they really want you to be friends with Kislev, despite the fact that's not that useful. Um, generally, very, very good. My queen demands your help. Oh, I need to get rid of someone. I'm tempted. No, you've got replenishment, haven't you? Wait, what do you do in the army? You do training. I mean, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That kind of makes sense. I could get rid of one of you, but I kind of want to keep you around. I could get rid of one of my Kislevite warriors. Okay, you go in there. God, that frostworm's fucking loud. Okay, let's Vitvo. Oh, flip it. Oh, Costaltin. You've gone all sexy. Stop it. Good. Okay. Elsa's got a war bear. Lovely. Okay, you know what I'm tempted to do? This land is ours. Is like hand over these units to you. And then pull south. Oh, I really want to spend... It, it just kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, we'll do that. We'll also get a beefy garrison. We've got a nice army there. They're fine. Right, they will be able to hold the line. We just need to knock out... Are you at war with... Um... You deign to behold my beauty. No. Okay, maybe... I don't really want to fight as easel, but I think I might have to. I think we're going to have to. More speed doesn't really help. My scar doesn't really help. Uh, I mean, it's nice, but it's not really going to help us. Best of the court. I mean, eventually we do probably want this, uh, but probably not right this second. Relentless charges. I do... I mean, speed and charge bonus, maybe. Creatures and lands. I'm not super invested in that. Uh, right. Okay. We could go with Ice Sheet, because that's just generally good. Shield of Ice is water. That is quite nice. Do we need, how many skill points do we need? All four of them. Okay. Okay. All right, let's get the Embodiment of Winter then, because it that's just going to make you generally, generally better. Um, let's have a Kitty, because you know what? Kitty Cats... Summon kitty cats anyway could be quite useful. Uh, we're gonna get we know I might beef up your defense just to try and keep you alive. And you ambush defense chance would be incredibly useful, not to mention the ex extra armor for everyone as well. And that is fine. We can't spend any money because. It's the fucking plague. I need to try and stay away from it. My armies need to stay away from it. Five turns of attrition is fucking brutal. Especially when you're surrounded by enemies and they're all trying to kill you at the same time. Good for Grimgore. Oh, you've received a plague. For the glory of Kislev. You may as well just wander back here. Guardian of the land. Um... I think we're going to have to kill Azizel. I think Azizel's chasing... Christ on a bike! Because that four frostworms? Are you okay? You don't seem okay. I think we're going to have to 
kick kick as easily in the nuts. They invite death. Tell you what, Castalton. Do you want me to join you. your war? Give give me a yeah, sure. Give me that. Your honor. Sure. Look, I don't want to be the I don't want to be the BFF of a big old greasy hobo, but Frostbank. we need to keep Kislev vaguely safe. You, I'm, you know, I'm fairly sure that thing's gonna bound, and I, I really hope she's wearing a seatbelt because she really needs one. As she says, close victory but low casualties. Seriously, against that, I mean. All right, whatever. That's going to have to wait until next time, though. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.